Hey y'all, welcome back to my kitchen. Today, we're making a really special recipe to me. This reminds me of my favorite teacher of all time, a childhood favorite turned adult favorite. Today, we're making tiger butter. That smells really good. I like that one a lot. <laughs> Tiger butter. Now this is one of those recipes that I have literally been making for, oh my gosh, how old am I? 20 years. That's weird to say that. 20 years. So this is a recipe that came from third grade and I'll explain that to you as we kind of make it. But first things first, I'm going to talk about ingredients that we need to make this tiger butter. First thing you need is crunchy peanut butter. This is pure preference. You can probably do it with creamy peanut butter. I never have. I prefer crunchy peanut butter, so that's what we're gonna use. Brand also doesn't matter. Dark chocolate chips. You can do it with milk chocolate, but I think dark chocolate cuts the sweetness in the perfect way. And you need white almond bark. So white almond bark and white chocolate are different. This is made for candy. This is made for, you know, covering pretzels, doing all that kind of stuff. So you want that for this because it's, it's different than white chocolate. White chocolate is that saccharine sort of sweet. This isn't that sweet. You want that. So it's more of that kind of yogurt sort of feel that we get with like raisins and, you know, pretzels and all that goodness. So you want white almond bark, not white chocolate. You're going to need a couple of bowls, one that's microwave safe and one that can handle a bit of heat. So what I have here is a large saucepan. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my fire on here. And we're gonna get this started boiling because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this large glass bowl and we're gonna set it on top of here. So we're gonna make our own double boiler to break down and melt our white almond bark. Now while we wait for my water to boil, I wanted to show you guys something. What do you think of my apron? Isn't she cute? I was actually contacted by a company called Twisted Kitchen Linens. Now, I don't do a whole lot of this kind of stuff just because if somebody wants to send me something, I'll try it out, but I never promise to talk about it just because what if I hate it? And I'm not gonna show you guys stuff that I hate, but I love this. <laughs> I'm obsessed. She makes aprons for plus size people. Now, the reason I think this is revolutionary is because, do you see the back? It like crisscrosses in the back. So they make the straps really, really long. So it actually comes right here and you put them through little loops that are on the side, crisscross it in the back, pull it around and tie it. So you don't have to worry about the like choke hold around your neck. I'm obsessed. I absolutely love it. It's my new favorite thing. And I, pr I asked her if we could do a discount code for you guys because if you're interested in them, I really feel like you guys should get like a little mini deal. So she's agreed to do 30% off for anybody who is interested in an apron. I also wanna let you guys know, I'm not getting paid for this. I just contacted her and I was like, I love these, they're amazing. Can I feature them? And obviously she was cool with that. So check the description bar if you guys are interested in one of these. She's got lots of colors, lots of prints. They're super, super cute. And she also has kitchen towels that like, I'm obsessed with these. They're thick, they're fantastic, and they have like a little loop so if you have like hooks in your kitchen, oh my God, I love them. So go check her out. You'll actually see my reviews <laughs> on her website because I love it that much. It's so, so cool. So go check the description box for a link for her and your code for your 30% off. So it's awesome. Our water is boiling here. So we are gonna start working on our chocolate. Now, white almond bark always comes in this solid block. Let me take it out of this plastic so you guys can see it a little better. It always comes in a tray, just like this. And it's a solid like block of chocolate. And I don't advise putting it in here like this. So try to kind of lean it against your counter, put your back into it and break it because that'll make it melt faster. One more, there it is. And it'll make your life much easier. So we have little tiny pieces we're gonna put them in here just like this. And what's gonna happen is all of that boiling water is gonna heat up our bowl. You'll see some condensation, don't let that freak you out, but it's gonna start melting that chocolate pretty quickly. So we're gonna work on this for a minute and then I'll show you what to do next. 
Be careful as your chocolate is melting because you see how your bowl is going to kind of slide. She's going to move around. It's just that condensation that builds up. You can turn your heat down to kind of let it do its thing. So how did I come to love tiger butter? Well, I was fortunate enough to have the same teacher for the first and third grades. And she ended up being one of my favorite teachers I ever had. Her name was Mrs. Sh Mrs. Schreiner. And I'm, I'm sad because she's no longer with us, but she was just the best. And anytime our class did something well, like we got a treat, she would make this for us. And I always thought it was the coolest thing. Now, I never saw it again. <laughs> she gave everybody the recipe in third grade. And I never saw it again until I was 16. I was looking through some recipes my mom had because I needed to take something to school, you know, in high school for some kind of potluck, like party thing. I think it was for theater class. And I found this recipe. And so I took it and I adjusted it a little bit because I wanted more peanut butter and I wanted, you know, dark chocolate instead of milk chocolate. So I kind of adjusted it to me and I took it and everybody flipped out. So I've been making this since I was 16. I'm 36, that's why, 20 years. But I've gotten marriage proposals off of this, you guys. I've gotten all kinds of stuff. This is a favorite, favorite fudge. And the best part about it is you don't have to heat anything up but this saucepan, like that's it. It's the world's easiest recipe and it looks so incredibly complicated. So that's why I wanted to show it to you guys. If you've been on my website much, you've probably already noticed this is on my website. I actually pre-filmed this video when we were starting this channel and we had a little technical issue with it. So I decided, you know what, I'll post it. So if people wanna make it, they have it and we'll film the video later. So that's why it's December. We're making it because it's not Christmassy, but it's delicious. So if you're having a get together with your family for Christmas, this is a really good one for the table. Watch yourself as this, as this sort of heat your bowl up. Mine's doing pretty well because it's a pretty thick glass, so I can touch this without it burning me. So I'm gonna let it keep going. I'm gonna take an entire bag of dark chocolate chips. We're gonna dump them in our microwave safe glass bowl. I'm just gonna dump them in here. And we're gonna put them in the microwave to melt them. One really important thing to know when you're heating chocolate in the microwave is you need to do 30 seconds at a time because if you just put this in there and let it go, you're gonna burn it. So 30 seconds, you're set, stir it, another 30. Okay, so I'm gonna reach up and I'm just gonna put this in here real quick. Yeah, we're gonna need another 30 for sure. As your almond bark is working, try to cover those pieces that aren't melted yet with that hot chocolate that's already melted. It's gonna kinda help speed up that process. Okay, I think they need another 30 seconds. This'll do it. So, about a minute and a half in 30 second increments. Okay. I still see some chunks, but yeah. There it is, we're melted. We're just gonna let our chocolate sit over here as we finish our white almond bark. We are almost there, y'all. All right, y'all, so this looks like it is good and ready. So we're gonna turn our heat off here, release that. I'm just gonna move this over. And I've already set out a towel here because you have all that condensation on the bottom of your bowl. You don't want it to get everywhere. My bowl's a little hot now, so I'm just gonna grab it. Set it directly here. I'm just gonna slide that hot water off to the side. So we're gonna work with our chocolate right here. Might keep one just in case, can't touch the bowl. So we've got our almond bark ready to go. Here's where your peanut butter comes in. Already opened it. This is a larger container of peanut butter than I typically use because my grocery store didn't have the smaller one. So this is the 40 ounce. You're not gonna use all this. I usually use the smaller one and that's in the recipe. So check out the recipe and the link in the description because it'll show you what to do. So I'm gonna eyeball this just because I've been making it for so long. I know how much I need but that recipe will tell you exact measurements. All right, now here's the kind of fun, easy part. You're just gonna take this and you're just gonna mix that peanut butter into your white almond bark. Just stir it around until that peanut butter melts and fully incorporates into your white almond bark. The smell of this, you guys, it's like a white chocolate Reese's peanut butter cup. Have you ever had one of those? That's what it smells like to me. Scrape the bottom of your bowl so you get all of the white chocolate and peanut butter put perfectly together. Now I'm gonna move this over and we're gonna grab a cookie sheet. 
you want your cookie sheet to have some size. You see here on the edge, I've got probably a good inch. This is a very liquidy mixture, so if you put this on something that doesn't have sides, it's just gonna slide right off. Put your wax paper down. You want the waxy side up because the point of this is keeping it from sticking. So give this another good stir. Now we're gonna take it and we're gonna dump it on our wax paper. And then we're gonna just scrape everything out. Get every last little bit of that because you don't wanna waste any of that goodness, trust me. Now we're gonna spread this out evenly on our cookie sheet. Oh, it smells so good. <laughs> I don't know who came up with this recipe. Like, I can't even fully take credit for it. But this is one of those I don't see a lot of. I really don't in all kinds of circles. It's something that people have never had before, and I can't fathom it. So, hopefully we can start something here. You guys will start making it and like it, and everybody become obsessed with it around the holiday season. We got everything all spread out. Now, here comes your chocolate. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our dark chocolate Good. And we're gonna take a big spoonful and we're just gonna drag a whole line down the center of your tiger butter like that. You're gonna do a total of probably three to four lines. It depends on how much chocolate you want. But you wanna use all that's in this bowl. Don't waste it. Do it just like that. Once you do your original four, kind of lines, keep adding chocolate to them to make them thicker. So they don't have to be skinny and they don't have to be perfect. This is kind of my favorite part, it's fun. So just until you use all that chocolate, keep adding to those lines. Now, why do they call it tiger butter? They call it tiger butter because you make it into a tiger print. It's very, very important that you do this, otherwise it completely loses the effect. Take your butter knife, Start in one of your far corners and just drag it to you. See how it does that? And just keep going the entire length of your batter here. And it doesn't have to be precise. All right, we're almost done here. So just drag it through, make your design. And if you want it to be a little more artistic, just do it the other way. Take it and drag it through. That's what I always do. I like it to have lots and lots of design. So I just drag it all over the place until I'm happy with it. <laughs> it may look messy and crazy, but it's really fun and it's gonna taste so good. We're all set, y'all. That is literally all you do. We're gonna put this in the freezer for about 30 to 45 minutes. You want it to be solid when you take it out. So. We'll see you in about 30 minutes. It's been about an hour, so as you can see, she's frozen solid, which is exactly what you want. So we're going to lift this right out of here. All right, so I'm just gonna move this wax paper down just a teeny bit on the sides. We got some sticking here on the sides, but because we did wax side up, it comes off super, super easy. Get you a big knife. We're gonna kind of score it so we know where we wanna make our first cut. You could break this if you want to. I've always cut it just because I'm OCD and I like actual squares. <laughs> so, done it all the way through. Make my first cut here. I leave it on the parchment paper to do that. See, when you do that first little cut, it kind of breaks on its own. It works out really well. See, full piece, okay? And then we'll do our second one. Continue this way and cut the entire block. Once you've cut all the way through with your first cut this way, then you just go back and do it the other direction. What's nice is as you go through cutting this, it's gonna break on its own pretty much and that makes it really easy for you to get all the way through it. Get you guys a pretty plate and just put them on there. One good thing to note if you're gonna use this for any kind of get together or anything like that, make sure that you keep them in the refrigerator up to time because these will melt. They need to be kept in the refrigerator and you can set them out on a table, that's fine, but don't set them next to a really hot dish. 
Well, there you go, guys. A beautiful heaping plate of some of the best fudge you'll ever eat in your entire life. So I'm gonna pick a pretty piece. This is what you want. This is why they call it tiger butter. That's the design that you want. That's why you drag your knife through it because it just looks so cool, but it looks so much more complicated than it really is. So we're gonna taste it. It's melting my hands. Mm. You guys, it is so good. Childhood for me. I loved this growing up and I still love it now as an adult. And it's kind of fun to make for my nieces and nephews and someday my kids. Thank y'all so much for watching. I hope you guys give this a try and you love it as much as I do. Make sure and check the description for the link to my website that gives you the full recipe on my social media and the 30% off of the super cute aprons. Definitely tag me over on Instagram if you give this a try with a photo. I wanna see. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.